Mama Bata Manga. One of the main reasons I decided to marry my current wife was because she's a good cook. It's not that she can cook fine food, but she can make good food with what she has in the fridge. She also likes creative cooking, and she made me many dishes that I had never eaten before. My wife is also good at making lunch, and her hobby is collecting lunchboxes, and she enjoys changing the lunchbox depending on the menu. If she started an Instagram account, she would go viral. She is so good at taking pictures every day of her lunchboxes that female employees would want to use them as a reference. But one day, all of a sudden, my wife's cooking started tasting… bad. I mean, the balance of the seasonings is all over the place. When I ate the pickled vegetables, the vinegar was so strong that I spit it out. And when she made simmered dishes, it was either too light or too salty, and there was no consistency. I thought maybe she was sick, so I checked on her for a while. But nothing changed. My son loves my wife's cooking too, and he always takes seconds. But since then, he has about two bites. Thanks for the food! and take snacks to his room. In addition to that, she somehow started to look more stern than usual and stopped smiling. I was curious. Um, did something happen to you recently? Well, I mean, it's hard to say that my wife's cooking's been bad recently, because she's always been a good cook. I asked my wife, albeit in a roundabout way, if there was anything wrong with her, but she would say she's fine. It only got worse after that, and although she pretended to act cheerful in our presence, she often sighed when she was alone in the kitchen doing chores. I already had enough of that light flavor, and my son started to eat sweets instead of eating rice. I finally told my wife that this wasn't good. Sorry, but doesn't it taste a little plain these days? Oh, sorry. That's right. I'll season it better. I was relieved when my wife said that, thinking, oh, I'm finally going to be free of the bad food. Then the next day, I got a dish that was way too richly seasoned. I turned my face to my son, and when he saw his mother in the kitchen, Ew! He stuck out his tongue and made a disgusted face. But I knew exactly how my son felt. Last time it tasted thin, but this time it felt like guzzling soy sauce. We'll get sick if we keep eating this kind of food thinking this was getting out of hand. Sorry, I can't eat this. I felt bad, but I threw the food away. My wife was in tears. Hey, you must be tired. You don't have to push yourself too hard. Let's go out to eat once in a while. Yay, I want to go to the conveyor belt sushi place. We haven't been feeding him good food lately, so this time we decided to go out for sushi, my son's favorite. As soon as we got to the sushi restaurant, delicious. And he ate it up. I felt bad for my wife, but it was the first good dinner I'd had in two weeks. But she didn't want to eat it at all. What's wrong? What, didn't you like sushi? I don't know what's going on anymore. Hey, something must be wrong. Don't stress yourself out. Talk to me. We're family, aren't we? And then suddenly my wife started crying. Not expecting her to cry. What? What? I couldn't hide my confusion. People were looking, so after calming her down and urging her to wipe her tears, she said, I... I... might have cancer. We were puzzled by the unexpected response. What? What, 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 what do you mean? Actually, about two weeks ago, I started to feel something strange in my mouth. I've never had that before. At first, it was just a little soreness and a pain that I could live with. But I went to the dentist, thinking I had cavity. But then he said it was nothing. And it's been hurting ever since. Yeah. Especially when I eat strongly seasoned food. So I lightened the seasoning a little, and it got better. That's why the taste was so light. I couldn't even give it a taste because it hurt so much. I thought it would be okay if I added more soy sauce or sugar or something. I was taken aback by my wife's words. You thought it was okay. 
but it really hurts. And lately, it hurts when I talk, and sometimes I can't even sleep. Then I saw a show on TV about tongue cancer, and I was so worried. After seeing that, my wife immediately went online and researched more about tongue cancer. Then she hurriedly checked the inside of her mouth in a mirror and compared it to the symptoms described on the internet, realizing that she had similar symptoms in her own mouth. Upon closer inspection, she noticed a small white spot on the tip of her tongue, which she found to be intensely painful. So my wife thought that she had cancer and was depressed. It's just a mouth ulcer. How can you say it's just a mouth ulcer? Mouth ulcers are a type of cancer. Huh? What are you talking about? How can all mouth ulcers be cancer? What? What are you talking about? A mouth ulcer is a tumor. What? She is clearly misunderstanding. Then I explained in detail the difference between a mouth ulcer and cancer, but she was not convinced. How can it not be a cancer when it hurts this much? Enough! I'm going to the hospital tomorrow. She said in an angry tone. But the next day, as soon as I got home, my wife apologized. She went to the doctor, but... It's a mouth ulcer. I'll prescribe medicine to reduce inflammation. The doctor told her. Is it really mouth ulcers? Don't you have to treat it with anti-cancer drugs? The doctor laughed hysterically. <laughs> it's just a mouth ulcer. But it hurts so much. Is it that bad? Is it nothing compared to the mouth ulcers you've had in the past? Here, my wife finally started connecting the dots. Um, what are mouth ulcers? Well, the cause of mouth ulcers is not clearly known, but it is said that they often but it is said that they often occur when a person is not in good physical condition. Like tiredness or before cold. It is inflammation, not cancer. Perhaps you've never had one before. Yes, I've never had it. I was just told that tongue cancer was a hot topic recently, and that it comes with the symptoms of a terrific and painful mouth ulcer. I thought it was the phase before cancer, like stage one. I heard the doctor laughed even harder when she heard that. My wife with an apologetic look on her face to me and my son. <laughs> I thought I had cancer, so I didn't have much of an appetite. And I was so scared that I couldn't sleep for days on end and went to work sleep deprived. So I was exhausted, both physically and mentally. I guess that's why the mouth ulcers didn't heal. If you had told me first, you wouldn't have had to go through all this pain. Our son and I wouldn't have had to eat the ridiculous food either. I'm so sorry about that. I almost started disliking my mom's cooking. Well, that's normal if you serve food like that every day. And since you were such a good cook, we both got used to delicious food. And then one day, the taste got really light or heavy. I was so full of myself that I... But we're a couple, a family, right? Of course we worry about you. So next time something happens, just tell us. Yeah. Then, when you get better, I want to eat your meat spaghetti again. Oh? <laughs> then I want to eat meat and potatoes and steamed rice. <laughs> Look forward to it. My wife was worried too, but I'm really glad she doesn't have cancer. I told my wife not to worry, but to be honest, I was pretty worried, so I was doing a lot of research. When she told me she was going to the hospital, I was nervous about what the diagnosis would be. I get mouth ulcers easily when I'm tired from work, so I keep medicine in the office. But I was really surprised to see my wife get it for the first time. I have a sister who is a little younger than me. We fight a lot, but she was so cute to me. Maybe because we don't have a father. She never went to cram school, but she's smart. Goes to the national stadium when she runs, wins prizes when she draws, and I'm proud of her. I wanted to send her to college with my earnings, but she said she wanted to work early herself to make things easier for her mother. But her boyfriend, who followed her around whether she broke up with him or not, 
forced her to stay in the relationship, as she later told me. She ended up getting married as soon as she graduated from high school. She seemed happy when she would sometimes come home with her kid, but one day, when my sister came home, I thought it was strange that she wore long sleeves, even though it was hot. But when she rolled up her wet sleeves while doing the dishes, I discovered that her arm was covered in bruises. I was shocked. Hey, what happened to your hand? I asked, and she jerked her body for a moment at my words, then mumbled. I realized how easy you were on me. When the guy actually punches you, you really go blank and black out. She said. I couldn't take in what she was saying for a moment, but soon realized it was a bruise inflicted by domestic violence. Me and my sister were in the kitchen, and my mum was relaxing in the living room. Come over here for a minute. I pulled her by the hand and took her into my room and urged her to tell me everything. Then, I found out that my sister lives in a public housing complex with two rooms and a kitchen, but she is being forced to live with her in-laws, where six people live. She's sometimes made to stay at her in-laws' house, but since it's an apartment, there are not enough rooms to begin with, and not a lot of space to live together. After that, she told me that she was beaten and kicked by her husband and stepfather. My sister, though strong-willed, is short and has a slender body. On the other hand, her husband's family members are all tall and strong. Getting beat by people like that was like an adult against a child, no matter how much she tried to resist. Speaking of her father-in-law, he has been moving from job to job due to his drinking problem, and now he works part-time at a mahjong parlour. Her mother-in-law was such a bum that she had a lover and worked at their snack bar and asked my sister if she wanted to work there as a hostess. Sister-in-law one is a mistress of a right-wing leader and a hostess, and whenever something goes wrong, she shows her tattoo to settle the matter. Sister-in-law two is a hostess and also appears in adult videos. According to her, this was a step for her to become an actress. As she spoke, the things she had been holding back began to flow out of her with tears. I was stunned as I listened. Finally, my sister said, I can't live like this anymore. She said in a strained voice. Incidentally, it was the first time I had ever seen my sister crying as a grown woman. And I was so angry inside that I couldn't hold it. And I involuntarily put so much force into my fist that it shook. Furthermore, my sister discovered that her husband had a large loan after she got married and only gets 60000 out of her paycheck. From there, she has to give 30000 for her husband's allowance and 30000 on living expenses, not including food, and she can barely afford to eat one meal a day. She wore lots of layers of clothes, trying not to worry me and our mother, but her legs, hands and face were thinner than before, and I knew something was wrong. But I thought she was just having a hard time raising her kid and had no idea this was happening. I showed her the forum with toxic parents because I had started looking at different forums on the internet after my sister's baby was born. You're brainwashed. If you can't beat them with force, beat them back with your head, I told her. And when I told her, but if you don't have the energy to do that anymore and you want to get out now, I'll do whatever I have to do to break it off and go beat up both of them. She felt like she had someone she could count on, and there was life in her eyes. And from there, she went for revenge. When she checked off the box that said spouse, she was told she was being provided for. But then she explained the meaning of a spouse. To those who laugh at the news of the death of a middle-aged man due to shock from excessive bleeding, she explained the meaning of hemorrhagic shock to them. Anyway, she would sneer at them every time they laughed at her. They would almost punch her when she talked back at first, but as she kept the smile on the corner of her mouth. This is why I hate kids who don't know anything about the world. I took a pathetic woman like you, and you have the cheek to talk back to me. Get out. Her my sister was kicked out. But when my sister came home from my parents' house, she decided to record everything and get revenge on these guys. So she took the recorded video, tapes, and recorded conversations of abusive language on the drive recorder along with her kid and took it to the lawyer on the spot and sued. By the way, 
I paid for all the lawyers. I wanted to get in there and mess up the husband and his father. But we both need money to live from now on. And I thought money was the best way to get revenge on that whole family. So I looked up lawyers who were strong against domestic violence and told my sister about them. We not only had evidence from my sister herself, but also from videos, audio tapes and so on. So they were completely screwed. When my sister told her husband that she was divorcing him, he was furious, but I had evacuated her to our parents' house. So one time, when her husband... You got to be kidding me. You think you can divorce me? Came and lashed out. I'd already handed over the evidence to the lawyer, and I had no intention of letting her go back to my parents-in-law's house again. Thank you for everything you've done to my sister, and smiled right in his face. He never came back again. My sister won five million in alimony, child support and medical treatment from the divorce, including domestic violence and the poor living conditions she was forced to live in. Furthermore, her father-in-law and husband were to be arrested because my sister had reported them for assault and disorder and had all the evidence. She was physically thin and emotionally disturbed because she was living at home with her husband and her in-law's house. But after returning to our parents' home and the support from my mother who learned about the situation and being able to live without problems with money turned her expression brighter and brighter. After the divorce, she started looking for a job while our mother watched her kid. My sister had always been capable, so she found a job at a major company in about two weeks. Our mother works part-time, and I live at home and I had a good income, so I could provide for my sister, who has a small child. But my sister... I want to work so that we can live together properly from now on. So my mother and I decided to support her and help her. She got a job. Money from alimony and medical bills came in, so my sister was trying to move out of the house right away. But... It's been a long time since you've been out in the real world, and it's pretty hard to raise a child on your own while working, so you should just stay here a little while longer. When I told her... I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. She apologised, but I was worried she might get into trouble again out of sight, and that was harder on me mentally, so that was the better option. When my sister first evacuated to my parents' house, she was glad that the water and electricity were not cut off, as she had been living in such a poor environment. She was happy that there was stuff in the fridge and when I bought her new clothes. Are you sure about this expensive stuff? She would reluctantly say. <laughs> and when my mother, who is such a good cook, put several side dishes on the table. Uh, are you sure I can eat this much? She would ask her hesitantly. <laughs> I ate breakfast and lunch today, and now I'm allowed to eat dinner too? Even words like that came out. It was really hard to see our mother crying secretly, as she didn't realise the environment she was put through. But my sister is now living a powerful life, eating breakfast, working at a company, and taking care of her kid as best she can. Watching her like that made me feel happy. But by the way, after that, her ex-husband and ex-father-in-law were arrested. And with the alimony and other expenses, the family's funds ran out in no time at all. I also heard that the store where her ex-mother-in-law used to work stopped receiving customers after the rumours about this incident. I don't want a reminder of a difficult past, so I won't share that information with her. But I hope they all experience the hell she had to go through. At the time, I lived at home with my parents and my father was away on a business trip for about three months. During that time, it was just my mom and I. That night, around 9pm, there was a knocking at the door and someone frantically turning the doorknob. Then they started ringing the doorbell like crazy. I didn't hear about dad coming home, but maybe he came home? Or is it a thief? Then I asked my mom. Hang on one second, let's see who it is from the window. She opened the curtain slowly before looking at the yard. There was a girl, balled up in front of her house. There's a girl, she's balled up in front of her house. A girl? No way! We opened the door to check on her, but she slowly lifted her head and looked at us. We were shocked when we saw her face. Her face was a bright red and her shirt torn to bits. 
There were almost no buttons, and her underwear was hanging on by a thread. Her skirt was half off as well. We looked and immediately could tell what had happened to this girl. Mom, is this? It doesn't matter. Just go. Get a blanket. Uh, okay. Uh, hang on a second. I was doing my best to cover her up when she grabbed a hold of me and wouldn't let go. My mother then called the police. I kept rubbing her back, trying to calm this trembling girl down. Shh, it's okay, you're safe now. Don't worry. I told her. Maybe she felt safer. She began bawling her eyes out. The police showed up immediately, but the officer who showed up happened to be a man, so... No! <laughs> she screamed and began crying even harder. My mother and I rushed to calm her down, and the officer immediately requested back for a female officer. He also called an ambulance. The female officer on scene went to the hospital with her, but she wouldn't let go of me the whole time. Later on, we found out that she was indeed raped. At first, we thought that she must have been targeted by someone random at night, and she just ran to our house for help, but reality was worse. The aunt of the girl showed up and... I'm so sorry about my niece. Thank you so much for saving her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just kept thanking us. <laughs> Allow me to explain everything. Everything that had happened to her. According to the aunt, that girl lived with her mom. Then one day, the mom met someone and she started dating him. That man was just a regular office worker and very kind. The girl was quick to let her guard down. The relationship between her mom and the man went well, and she remarried. The girl was happy too, but one day, when the mom was out with some friends, the stepfather started talking to the girl. She had eaten the food that her stepfather cooked for her before she got to sleep. She was asleep on the sofa when she was woken up by the stepfather. And then... Hey, I'll show you how to feel good. He said. She was in middle school, but she had really trusted him, so she said, sure. The stepfather started touching her all over. She thought it was normal since he was now her dad, and she just let things go. At first, it was just light rubbing, but things started escalating. She thought it was a little weird, but by then... She couldn't talk to anyone about it. It wasn't like he was threatening her. He even acted normal around her. Aw, he's such a great dad, her friends would say. She thought that maybe she was the weird one. She was also worried that her mom might be upset after learning about this. She just accepted everything that he was doing and she started feeling like she was something dirty. She thought that if she told someone, they would hate her. A little while later, her mom, who was very kind, passed away in an unfortunate accident without knowing anything that was happening to her daughter. After the funeral ended, he came home. He attacked her in the night. After listening to what the aunt was saying, my mother and I couldn't hold back our tears and started becoming nauseous. Oh, how could that happen right after she lost her mother? How dare he? He's being charged, right? The aunt shook her head regretfully at me. Uh, I can't do anything to that man. If I did, I would have to make her see him time and time again in court. She would have to talk about everything that happened to her in front of an audience. He settled out of court. But he raped that innocent girl time and time again. He just paid it off while he continues to live life comfortably. I was so upset. I don't want that girl to be put through any amount of pain anymore. She's all that's left of my sister. That's why I decided to take her in. The aunt was unable to have kids because of a condition she had when she was young. She had a boyfriend, but she had given up on marriage, so she was fine being single for the rest of her life. She hadn't had a boyfriend in years and lived alone. She's probably terrified by any man at the moment, that's why I thought that it would be best if I take her in. I don't want her to go to a foster home, and I'm not going to allow her near that rotten human. She was bawling. 
Is the girl okay? <laughs> She's in the hospital while receiving around o'clock mental care. I can work remote nowadays, and I don't want that girl to leave my side. Phew, I feel a little bit better after hearing that. <sighs> I'm glad there are still people who care about her. I have nothing but thanks for y'all. She ran away, but I'm so glad that she stumbled into your house. <laughs> we didn't do anything special. Uh, we let her know it was fine, but she just kept thanking us and gave us some money before leaving. When it was just us again. Uh, I don't know, this feels wrong. The guiltiest of them all is just roaming and living life while she's hiding from everyone. Seriously, I can't wait for Karma to catch up on him. That's how this ended. However, right around the time that she left the town, some of the people in the area were confused by her disappearance. They immediately found out what he had done. Apparently, someone had seen her running out of the house and coming to our house as well. People started vandalizing the home that they had lived in. You're not human. Shame on you. He's just a devil wearing human skin. How could you attack an innocent girl like that? He was being yelled at while just walking around the streets. Of course, his company was quick to catch wind as well. Just quit already. He quit real quick. No matter how much she was shaken down, that girl is gone. The only person left was that man. If he left the house, he was screamed at. If he stayed inside, his house was vandalized. He became depressed and slowly went mad. That girl had gone through worse though, and no matter what happens to that man, I cannot sympathize. My name is May. I am 27 years old. Right now, I am pregnant and I am due in about two months. I am full of anxiety every day because it's my first baby. But my husband Yusuke takes care of my health every day, so I am able to stay calm. I wonder if it will be a girl or a boy. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we'll have to decide on a name soon. I've already decided on a name. I have both male and female candidates. I'm looking forward to it every day. I see. Then let's go with the name you decide. We were both looking forward to the birth of our child. I had no idea at the time that my husband would turn out to be such a changed man. Two months later, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy close to my due date. We named the child Coda. As my husband had suggested, Coda was a long-awaited child of ours. My husband and I loved him very much. Even the smallest gesture was adorable. However, there were times when we felt something was off while raising him. When I took my son to play at a children's center when he was one and a half years old, the other kids would say, Mom, look, I'm going to do this. But Coda just says, Uh, uh, and he doesn't speak very well. When the discomfort was growing, thinking there was something off, Yosuke also seemed to be concerned about it, and started asking me more about it as he looked it up on the internet. Uh, Kota doesn't talk very much. When will he call me dad? Yeah, even the other kids are able to say mom and dad. I've been a little concerned about that too. What should we do? Should we go see a doctor? See a doctor? That makes it seem like Kota is sick. Maybe he's just growing slow. Shouldn't we take him to a health center? Yeah, let's take him to the health center for a consultation. He might have an intellectual or developmental disability, and the earlier he's examined, the sooner we can follow up with him. There's no way my kid is disabled. We don't know yet. I'm just saying it's a possibility. While my husband angrily leaves the room... <sighs> let's go to the hospital to clarify everything and think about it. If my kid was disabled, there's no way I could raise him. He blurted out. My husband had loved Coda up until now, so I was shocked. But I didn't immediately believe his words and tried to think that I just misheard him. When I went to the health center for consultation, the staff told me that there might be something wrong with him and recommended a hospital visit. But I went to the hospital that day and had it checked out. When I reported this to my husband, he hardly seemed to listen to me and didn't seem interested. Later, when I went to the hospital to get the results of the tests, my husband, who had seemed uninterested until then, suddenly appeared at the hospital. 
They're going to check up on him today, right? That'll make everything clear. Yeah, you're right. Although I was concerned about my husband, who seemed uninterested up until now, we decided to listen to the results of the diagnosis. As for the test results, he has an intellectual disability after all. Let's support him using different methods upon further examination. Uh, I see. What are the different types of support? Rehabilitation to encourage growth, sharing concerns with families who also have children with disabilities and so on. We can also have a nurse or other healthcare professional check on him at home. Would that help a little? Will he be able to talk? It depends on the individual, but it will grow slowly with the help of various people. He'll be able to talk better here than he can now. I was anxious until then, and I was relieved when the doctor told me about it. But my husband was listening with a doubtful look on his face beside me. A child is disabled, after all. Yes, he is. But with parental support, will you take him in? I don't want it. Both the doctor and I could not believe our ears for a moment when we heard these words. Without any concern, my husband kept talking. I don't want disabled kids. I can't raise them. What should I do in that case? Do I just leave him in an institution or something? What? Is there any facility that takes care of disabled people? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? There is no such facility. Please, discuss the future of your child's medical care with the two of you. And decide on a course of action. What? We're going to keep living together from now on. <laughs> no way. My, if you intend to continue to raise this child, you'll have to manage on your own. After saying that, my husband left. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to raise him after being told he had a disability. But he's still my beautiful child. I was stunned by my husband's words and actions, because I had never thought of leaving our kid anywhere. The doctor, who couldn't bear to look at him, introduced me to a counselor at the hospital. I was able to learn about various information such as rehabilitation methods, day services, counseling centers, and subsidy programs. I did not return home from the hospital, but took Koda back to my parents' house and told my parents in tears about what happened. They were surprised, but accepted me and Koda. They prepared everything we needed, including daily necessities, and they treated Koda as warmly as they treated me, and they were as affectionate towards Koda as I was. After that, I divorced my husband. I didn't want anything to do with him anymore, so we split our savings 50-50, and I even refused child support. Although he didn't have any intention of paying it from the first place, then, life began to be hectic but peaceful with my parents, myself, and Koda. Thanks to the hospital and fostering, he grew up and is able to communicate better than before. That alone was enough to make us happy, but then we discovered that Koda had a certain talent. It was... piano. Koda touched the piano for the first time in kindergarten, and surprised his kindergarten teacher by immediately playing songs he heard for the first time. With Koda's motivation and his kindergarten teacher encouraging him, he started learning the piano, which he enjoyed and became very good at it. When he entered competitions, he started winning gold medals and even national championships. Now, Koda is 16 years old. He is now a bit of a celebrity, as he is even asked to perform in concerts. Then, my ex-husband suddenly paid a visit to our house. How are you? How's Kota? What are you doing here? I heard Kota's good at the piano. I bet he's making a lot of money from concerts and stuff. What are you talking about? I haven't forgotten that you told the doctor you didn't want Kota 14 years ago. You're lucky. No, no, I am... Um, I just panicked. You just panicked? You didn't even contact us since then. What's your intention? Well, it's not like I have an intent. But I'm a little short on money. Is that why you contacted me? For money? You work, don't you? What did you spend it on? Gambling. Gambling? You had it coming, didn't you? The minute you run out of money, you're gonna come crying to us? No way! But you're living comfortably on Kota's money, aren't you? Kota's my kid too, so can't you share a little bit? I'm saving all the money Kota earns so I don't have to worry about anything in the future. We live frugally with my own money. 
I don't do whatever I want like you. You're saving up? Yes. Then take some of that money and share it with me. I don't owe you anything. What are you talking about? But he's my son. I have rights. I'll support Kota too, and you'd be better off with me, right? I was fed up with him and quickly called the police. As he was being taken away by the police, Kota heard the commotion and came out of the house. But then when he saw my ex-husband... Don't ever come back! He shouted. I don't know if Kota remembers my ex-husband, but there's no way I could forgive him for abandoning my beloved child just for him to suck up the honey. I'm just happy to hear him play the piano and laugh. I'm so grateful to Kota for giving me this happiness, and I'm so grateful that he was born. He and I had been dating for two years, and even met my parents. We were planning to get married in the future, and every day was happy with him. But one day, I came home from work as usual. He and his affair partner were flirting in the open. The room I always cleaned was a mess, and on the table was an empty bottle of fine wine I had bought him. Oh, oh what is this? What are you two doing? Oh, <laughs> this is your dull girlfriend. Pointing at me was a flamboyant woman who looked like she got around. Yeah, yeah, this is the dull girlfriend I've been using because she's got money. I'm your dull girlfriend? Then, as if mocking me, the woman smirks. Hey, did you know your only value was money? Because you buy everything. I was able to use the extra money to eat good food with him and go vacations together. What an idiot. She didn't even notice. Both of them made fun of me right in front of me. I found myself in disbelief, wondering if this was real. I won't forgive you. I'm going to tell my father. What? That's hilarious. Telling your parents? You're like a child. <laughs> Seriously, I had dinner with your father once, and he was a real boring and wimpy old man. And you're gonna ask him to help you. I'd beat the hell out of him in a heartbeat. That's hilarious. What? You should feel sorry for him. You have to go easy on him. Both of you, get out of this room! Huh? You're the one who leads to leave? I'm the one paying rent! But it's in my name. Oh... I'm going to take all these designer bags. I look so much better with these bags and shoes than you. You're too dull for that. They giggled and mocked me. I had a good salary because I had a good job. So I bought him all kinds of things because it made me happy to see him happy. But when they said all of that to me, I was so frustrated and miserable that I ran straight out the house and called my father. My father was surprised to hear me crying. What's wrong, Tanako? What happened? My father called to let me know that he would be there as soon as he heard the location from me. And about 15 minutes later, two black luxury cars stopped in front of the apartment building. From there, five young men got out. Then they opened the door of the other car, and a man got out. I cried as soon as I saw my father's face. Then I cried and told him what he and that woman had done to me. As I was crying, my father, as well as the young people who came with me. They're not gonna get away with hurting the miss. They're not getting away with this with a scratch. And they were angry. Then my father and the young men went into my apartment. I didn't want to look at that scene again, so I stopped in front of my room. The young man opened the door with all his might <laughs> and yelled as they walked in. They were already gone from the living room, and they were in the middle of having sex on the bed where he and I used to sleep. As soon as the woman saw my father's young men, ah! Who are you people? She cries out and wraps the sheet around her body. Next to her, also freaking out. Uh, who the hell are you guys? They both kept screaming. I told you I'd tell my father, didn't I? Huh? What are you talking about? He's not the same man I met the other day. He's my father too. He's from my mother's second marriage, but
but this man is my real father. Then my father gave him a sharp glare. It's you, huh? You're the one who hurt my daughter. What? No, no, I... From the young men surrounding him in my father's presence, he seemed to know what kind of man he was, and he turned completely naked and pale. Then my father declared an order. Hey, take these two. No! I'm sorry, Danico, forgive me, help! The young men put duct tape over their mouths and carried them out of the room. And they were put in a wagon that had been prepared at some point in front of the apartment building, as they both sniffled and cried. Help, I beg you! Uh huh? You said you were going to beat the hell out of him earlier, didn't you? Then, my father and a young man glared at him. I, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say it, so, so help me. I ignored him. I hope you two get a good punishment from my father. My father is a Yakuza, but he doesn't do anything to people and is actually a really kind person, including the young men. He left my mother after I was born because he was the head and he wanted to make sure that my mother and I wouldn't be looked at with cold eyes from society. My mother remarried and became happy, so I saw my father often and kept in touch with him so he wouldn't be lonely. The young men were also really protective of me, calling me miss and pampered me. So I told my father to just scare the living daylights out of them and nothing more. I also thought it was a little bit uncalled for to tell my father, but I would have completely cried myself to sleep if I was alone and I was so frustrated. After that, I contacted one of the young men and I was relieved to hear that they were both released. I asked him what kind of punishment they got, and he told me they gave him a beating as a punishment. They then took the two deep into the mountains and dug a hole right in front of them. Apparently, both of them passed out in fear. And when the two woke up, they took them to the office and asked if they still want to be punished or pay me alimony. They both got down on their knees and apologized crying, saying they would pay me as much as they could, so they settled for 10 million each. As for him, he collected the money by borrowing as much as he could with the cash he had on hand, and when that wasn't enough, they agreed to collect the other half from the company's payroll. The woman didn't have any cash at all, so she borrowed as much money as she could, but that wasn't enough, so she got a job at the bathhouse. I've been pretty gentle with him. My father said. And he's right. If a man like that gets serious, they wouldn't have gotten out alive. The young men. You sure, miss? I can hurt him more. They said that, but I can't go that far. No, that's enough. I mean... It wasn't good of me either. I involved my father in my problems with that guy, even if it was the spur of the moment. It's not your fault, miss. I can't forgive him as the same man. The young man comforted me. After that, a mutual acquaintance of ours talked to him because they worked at the same place, and since the acquaintance hadn't heard anything about me from him recently. You don't talk about Tanako recently. Did you guys break up? When a colleague asked him casually, I'm sorry! <laughs> Please forgive me! He screamed and passed out, bubbling from his mouth. It must have been really traumatizing for him. When he dug a hole in a mountain, they said they weren't actually going to bury them. But if a group of men did that to me, I'd be scared too. I heard that Akko is desperately trying to make money as a bubble girl. She can't leave the business, no matter how she hates it, until she pays off her debt to me. There's no way she can see his lover either. She probably regrets it now. Although, it's too late. I should have taken revenge on my own, thinking it was a bad idea to get my father involved in this. But I was relieved those two who laughed and mocked me so much, they got their punishments. That day, I was at the public swimming pool with my four-year-old daughter and my husband. We used to take a trip every year as a family. But because I was pregnant, we couldn't take my daughter anywhere, let alone a vacation. But I'm finally in my stable period, and the three of us were at the pool, promising to be careful. I had chosen a bathing suit that covered my belly, but because my belly is so big, people could tell I was pregnant. Mom, let's go swimming! 
<laughs> I'm fine. Go on and play with Dad instead. Okay. My daughter happily plays with the children's slide with my husband as I watch and wave. It was a weekday and the pool was relatively empty, but a group of high school boys were making a lot of noise. Take that! Stop it! They were splashing the water with both hands, causing others to get splashed as well, which make them look annoying. Ugh, such bad manners. I thought, and then I left the place for a bit. Mom, I want some juice! We'll have to wait quite a while for your turn, so I'll go get you one. Tanako, stay there. Okay, thanks. I watched a family with children while my husband went with our daughter to buy some drinks. <laughs> We're going to be a family of four soon. I can't quite feel it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. As I was thinking about this, the high school kids from earlier came toward me, making a lot of noise. I unconsciously took a step toward the poolside to avoid them, not wanting to get involved. As I was doing so, I turned my back to the group of students and tried not to make eye contact with them, when suddenly... Look at that fatty. Gross. How can she come to the pool with that ugly body? She needs to look at herself in the mirror. Hey, you're out of line. It's fine as the truth. I couldn't help but glance toward a group of students to such words. Then, with the person who said that, our eyes met. What are you looking at? Don't get in my sight with that ugly look. Ah, whoa! My body plunged into the pool. And that pool was a wave experience pool. A pool where you could experience big waves at a certain time. And in some places, the water was up to three meters deep. And where I fell was in the deep part. I panicked because I couldn't get my footing but still managed to swim somewhere I could. But then my foot got stuck, and I drowned. <gasps> Help! Luckily, the staff noticed me right away and pulled me out of the water. Are you okay? But my body was too heavy since I was pregnant, and I couldn't respond right away. Uh, mommy! What happened? Are you alright? Your wife seems to have fallen into the pool. There is an infirmary. Would you like to rest there? But my husband, who had brought drinks for me and my daughter, came and rushed over to me. Uh, I was pushed into the pool. What? Are you serious? Uh, yeah. There was a group of high school students at the pool who were making a lot of noise. And it was one of them. I won't forgive them. Why did they do that? Uh, I was so scared. I couldn't get my footing and my legs were cramping up. I didn't know what was going to happen. You're fine now. I'm gonna find out who did this. I'll never let them get away with this. We left after that, but my husband called the pool manager and the police to explain the details of the accident. And because I was pregnant, an investigation was immediately launched, and shortly after, I received a call that a high school boy who was believed to be the culprit has been found. But the high school boy claims he did not verbally abuse me or push me down. My husband and I were outraged by this. My wife actually fell into the pool? My husband said so, but since there were no witnesses at this point, we had to discuss it with the other party. You've got to be kidding me. It's true that he was verbally harassing you and pushed you into the pool. At any rate, it sounds like he's willing to meet, so let's meet and talk. Then my husband managed to get the evidence before the meeting, and days later... We went to the meeting place. Then came that high school boy who pushed me down, and his mother. The mother was condescending from the moment she arrived. My son says he didn't. Are you sure you're not mistaken? Uh, no, your son certainly pushed my back. What? I didn't push. Her son is still the same as he was at that pool, joking around and showing no remorse at all. Don't lie to me. You certainly pushed me. Huh? What are you talking about, lady? Your body was off balance, and I reached out to help you. You can ask my friend who was with me if you want. I can't trust a friend like that. I'm pretty sure they're talking to each other anyway. I heard you're pregnant. Is that why you're being a little irrational? 
I'm angry how your son says he didn't do what he did and shows no remorse. Hmm, but my son says he didn't do it, right? Fine then. You're after the alimony anyway, right? Uh, what? My son, you see, has been accepted to a very prestigious university. So I don't want this kind of accusation. Let's just get this over with. The mother then placed a thick envelope in front. It's not about the money. Oh my, are you trying to get me to raise the amount of money? Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> Poor people. <sighs> I see. So you're just going to keep your mouth shut. Can you say the same thing when you see this? Uh-huh. What? I showed them a certain video in which a schoolgirl was seen playing. Yay! Hey, don't film! Uh, what is this video? Since you're both keeping quiet, I've enlisted the help of a friend to spread the word online so I could find some witnesses. <laughs> Seriously, stop! Not the armpit! Then, one of the girls sent this to me. Uh, what? Watch the one on the left? I said and turned the volume up. What are you looking at? Then the male student and I could be seen in the video, and the whole conversation could be heard. Get out of my sight. Ah! Do you still want to keep your mouth shut after seeing this? They both turned blue when they saw the footage. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, forgive us. You, you need to apologize too. I'm... I... I'm so sorry. There is no forgiveness. Because of your son, I fell into a deep pool and was carried away to where I couldn't get my footing. If people find out about this, oh, my son's life. I almost died with my own child in my belly. If you're a mother, you should know how I feel. If your son had just acknowledged and apologized from the beginning, none of this would happen. But neither my husband nor I are willing to forgive you. We will send this to your son's school. After saying this, the mother broke down crying and her son was shocked. And then her son's admission to a very prestigious university, which he had been accepted to, was scrapped. And he was to take a year off. And then the whole school found out about it. And the other students, especially the girls. Ah, I can't believe it. You're the worst. I hear he's become a recluse after graduation, but I think he deserves it. I heard his mother's husband also found out and started blaming her for getting his admission to the college revoked, so they've been living apart. After that, I went through the last month of pregnancy without incident and gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Mom, the baby's so cute. <laughs> yes, he is. Be a good sister, okay? Yeah, I'll do my best. I was really scared about this incident, but I'm going to enjoy the pool as much as I can when my son grows up, because I couldn't enjoy it this time. One day I came home from work to find a letter in my mailbox from the superintendent. I opened the sealed envelope and found a piece of paper with the message, I need to talk to you about the noise during the day. What noise are they talking about? I mean, during the day, I'm at work during the week, and I'm usually out on weekends. I come home most nights just to sleep, so I couldn't possibly have any idea what it was about. The sad corporate life. Maybe someone is extremely sensitive, but I'm not home in the first place. Anyway, let's check with the management company. The next day I decided to use my lunch break at work to call the management company. I was notified that there had been a complaint? Yes, I heard that most of them are on weekdays during the day. May I visit you to hear more about it? Okay. The management company said that they had received numerous complaints, but the word weekdays stuck with me. But they seemed to want to hear what was going on and resolve the situation as quickly as possible, so I suggested to come over if it was okay with them after I finished work. I went back to my apartment after work and waited for them at the entrance. I entered the room with the man from the management company to take a look at the room. I don't find anything particularly suspicious. I don't much spend that much time at home in the first place, so... I see. Certainly not too messy for a man living alone. After that, he asked me several questions, such as the time of day I usually use my appliances. But when he found out that there was nothing suspicious about me... It's not very likely. 
But if it's not you, there is a possibility that someone else is in. Have you given someone a duplicate key? Or have you dropped or lost it recently? What? I didn't give anyone a duplicate key, and I didn't drop it. It's just the one I have in my possession. I mean, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Just the thought of anyone else having a key gives me the creeps. But there are complaints about noise during the day, even if it's not you, so... That's true. But it was creepy to even think about a third party entering my apartment without my permission. It's like a horror story. Because the entrance to the entrance of this apartment is auto-locked. The code for the auto-lock is changed once a year, but the contract basically allows families to be informed if only he or she reports it. But I don't have a family. Well, the fastest way to find out is to check with the surveillance cameras. Let's take a look together. I was terrified, thinking that this would be even more horrifying if there really was someone in the video. The man from the management company told me that the surveillance cameras were left running and that any video up to a month old would be stored. Thank you, Mr. Surveillance Camera, for watching over us 24-7. The first surveillance camera records the entrance I saw, narrowing it down to my work day, etc. Showed me going to work normally. This apartment is not so frequented by people coming in and out. I noticed something unusual while watching the camera. This woman, isn't there something wrong with her? A woman was recorded entering the entrance as if she was waiting for me to leave for work. Oh, you're right. If she's not touching the pin machine, maybe she's pressing the emergency release code. Emergency release? What is that? Oh, there's a common code that certain people in these apartments can use to open the door in an emergency. Uh, I see. That's odd, though. The only people who would know the code in case of a problem would be men, including me. What? That's strange. The person I saw was definitely a woman. I'm listening to the man's words and I'm finally getting scared. But I don't see a face in the reflection. That's true. But this woman, she's walking towards my room. I had a bad feeling as I watched the footage. Then the woman stopped in front of my room and started shoving something through the crack in the door, shuffling around. What is this woman doing? The door opened easily from the side where I was thinking that. You're kidding me! How did she open the door if she didn't have the key? Maybe she picked through the cracks. I'm picking, that's... Totally a crime! Then suddenly the woman turns to the camera and her face appears on the screen. Oh, there's her face. This person. Do you know her? We were in the same club in college, but we didn't talk much. We only said hello to each other. Is it someone else then? No, it's not a mistake. It's definitely Aiko. Well, she's already broken in. I think you should check it out properly, since she knows where you live. Right, how does she even know where I live? It's been years since I graduated from college. I think you should go to the police. Then I went to the police, like the man told me to. I told them what happened, and they checked the cameras. Then, on a weekday, after taking a break from work and waiting with the police, the officers rushed in and arrested Aiko when they saw her enter the room as expected. I was with the police officer, and as soon as Aiko saw me... You finally came to see me. I missed you so much. And jumped on me to hug me. Of course the police officer seized her, but it was seriously terrifying. Aiko, not knowing what was going on. I'm so happy. You wanted to see me, didn't you? That's why you came home so early, right? She said. The guy from the management company and even the police officer looked at me, checking if she really wasn't my girlfriend. I really wanted them to give me a break. No, she's not. At the police station, Aiko was interrogated, and this was terrifying. Why did you go into someone else's room? What was your motive? The policeman asked her, and she answered in a nonchalant manner. What do you mean? Because I'm his girlfriend, of course. She said. When the police came to check on me, I shook my head violently and denied it. I barely knew Aiko. When I told them I hadn't seen her in years, the cops were shaking their heads too. Apparently, Aiko fell in love with me at first sight when we were in college, and sometimes our eyes would meet, which made her think I liked her. She's been having a secret love affair since then. After college, she looked me up on Instagram, and identified the apartment from the landscape of the photos I was putting up. As for the location of the room, 
she found out from the fact that the management company had put my last name on the mailbox inside the entrance for easy recognition. Incidentally, the emergency code in question was figured out from the hand movements of a maintenance worker who was opening it for maintenance and tried several different ways to open it until it opened. Uh, it's the power of love. Oh, that's the stalker. It seems that it's common for stalkers to be unaware that their behavior is strange. Apparently, after Aiko entered my room, she imagined being embraced by me as she sniffed my bed, snuggling under the covers. Oh. When I heard this story, I felt nauseous and immediately decided to buy a new bed. So apparently, the noise in question was caused by Aiko diving onto the bed and getting excited and flailing around. I'm not sure if I should say this, but Aiko's body is twice as big as mine, and she seems to be heavy. I also heard that Aiko took hidden photos of me and put them together in a photo frame in her room, and even to those around her. He's my boyfriend, but he's so busy with work right now, I only get to see him once in a while. She said. After she was arrested, I got a restraining order against her. But she didn't learn her lesson at all, and she contacted me. So they put her behind bars the second time around. Why are you separating from me, my darling? I don't want Aiko to come out again, but she will eventually. And I don't want her to identify me as her boyfriend again next time. So I decided to take the plunge and quit my job, moved out of my apartment and moved to another prefecture. I'm not the type of person to make people misunderstand me, and I only talked to Aiko a few times, so I couldn't help but wonder how she got it so twisted. I deleted my Instagram so I can never be located again, and I'm going to live quietly in a new place. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. What did you think of today's episode? Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on today's story. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe!